LasVegasDiscount.net's the best there is. Save up to 50% on your next Vegas trip. And travel, rental, shows, and tours. Find the deals you're looking for. LasVegasDiscount.net. LasVegasDiscount.net. If you're going to Vegas for deals that are the best, visit LasVegasDiscount.net. This is Brock Lesnar, and you're listening to Fight Net Radio. Yo, hi, this is Sugar Ray Leonard, and you listen to Fight Net Radio. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to listen to Fight Net Radio. Lee Harvey Oswald, what do you name on how am I supposed to know you? This is Frank Shamrock. We're listening to Fight Net Radio. Hi, this is Mia, the Knockout St. John. You're listening to Fight Net Radio, and there's no way I would ever touch Lee. This is Chuck Jack Zizzardell. Hi, I'm Stephen Bonner, and you're listening to Fight Net Radio. Dan Henderson, you're listening to Fight Net Radio. Everybody, welcome to Fight Net Radio, <laughs> where Lee's burning every <laughs> bridge there is out there. All right. Hi, this is Manny Pacquiao. I'll fight anybody I'm FightNetRadio.com. Okay. Hi, everybody. Welcome to FightNet Radio. My name's Lee Hanish, and that is the bookmaker, the bookie, the man himself, Bobby Capucci, live from Las Vegas. How you doing, Bobby? Hanging in there, Lee. It just rolls off the tongue. I just like that. I'm going to, you know, it's going to be a t-shirt someday. It's going to have its own hey. following. I feel that. So we were talking about Major League Baseball, and since we last talked to you all, uh, there were at least six teams involved, and now we're down to the last four teams, and really we're down to the last three teams. Let's be perfectly honest. Short of there being a billion-dollar baby mo- what is it, million-dollar baby moment with the Dodgers where they slip and somebody like gets killed on the way out to the diamond, the Dodgers will probably finish the sweep as we record this uh, on Thursday night, even if they don't, uh, I don't know of any team that's come back from 0 and 3. So I think it's safe to say the Dodgers have got it uh, taken care of. Uh, the Yankees have won tonight, so they are now three to two in that series. I know you're jacked up, so let's talk a little Major League Baseball. Just, just a one quick correction. A team actually has come back from 0 and 3, and it was the Red Sox against the Yankees in 2004. Was it and really? It's yeah, it's basically a holiday in Boston now. I mean, they, they're so lacking for quality based stuff that that it's happened on the field in their you know history that that's basically a holiday in that crap beat town. That's shocking and not surprising to me. And the fact that that's what they, you know what? I'm a Chargers fan, so we still the the things that the Charger fans celebrate is almost equally as stupid. So yeah, it's like it's I like in it. Philadelphia, you know, like the uh, the the biggest, the greatest sports figure in the history of Philadelphia is a fictional boxer in Rocky Balboa. That's true. That's true. They actually had to put the statue back up because the city got mad. I mean, imagine. I, I can't. No, again, I'm a Charger fan, so mm, yeah, we're still celebrating Junior Seau knocking down a Dolphins pass in the end zone to go to the championship, like it was the greatest moment ever. So, yeah, I, I, I do get it. Actually, on some very weird level, I do understand. All right, talk about your Yankees. What are, what's it look like? Uh, are they going to come out of this in one piece? Well, I'll tell you what. There's, with this Yankee team, they remind me a lot of the 1996 Yankee team that won the uh, World Series. Nobody expected that Yankee team to be there. You know, they went down 2-0 to a great Braves team with great pitching. You know, they came back that third game, and they strung it together. They started hitting, led by a young cheater. And we all know how that ended up. And this team has a lot of shades of what was going on in 96 with Judge leading the way this time instead of Jeter as the rookie phenom. But what gets lost in all of this and with the Yankees and, you know, I understand the craze with Bird and Judge. They hit the long ball. People want to watch that. People love that. I get it. But I I think one of the unsung heroes is Greg Bird. He went through a whole season of being injured, ankle injury. He had no idea what was wrong, if he was going to need surgery, if he was even going to be back. And this is after uh, – the, the spring training when he just ripped it up. He was on fire in spring training. We had real high hopes for him at first base, and then he got injured, and it was kind of like a uh, 
a hodgepodge of players at first base. We They signed Chris Carter. He couldn't do it. But now fast forward to the playoffs and Greg Bird, every single at bat is just a fantastic, fantastic at bat. I mean, the guy's had a, a walk in like 11, 11 out of 12 games, something like that. He's just he's seeing the ball so well right now and he's being a catalyst in that lineup. And it, it's 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 great to see the young Yankees really chipping in here. Outstanding. Uh, so it looks like it's going to be a Dodgers Yankees World Series. Uh, I would like to believe that. I think it's good for Major League Baseball. How is their uh, viewership in? How's the TBS deal? I don't know if you track any of that, but I'm wondering how it's actually all playing out viewer wise. Well, I'll tell you what. If you look at the the viewer the viewer on uh, Monday, the the numbers on Monday with Monday Night Football, the the numbers were terrible on Monday Night Football, and I, I think a lot of that had to do with the baseball game. Um, I think that the passion is coming back for baseball when the Yankees are playing like this. People want to watch baseball again. Either you love them or you hate them. You want them to win or lose. And then, like you said, we have out here on the left coast, we have the Dodgers who are, you know, a storied franchise as well. And like you said, a steamroller. So where if things keep going the way they're going and if the Yankees can snatch one out of two games in Houston and we have a Dodgers-Yankees series coming up, I mean, think about the first game. We'd have maybe uh, Kershaw... Tanaka at Dodger Stadium, hearkening back to the old days of, you know, Yankee-Dodger rivalry before the Dodgers split for the West Coast. Yeah, no doubt about it. I mean, when you get market one and market number two going at it, it's going to do something. And yeah, I hate, the shares are going to be insane. And I hate to say it, but the Dodgers are a predominantly sort of white-bearded, millennial, yuppie kind of... It's the kind of thing that a younger generation can get behind. They're very hip as it goes. They're very... Um, yeah, they have that L.A. flair. You yeah, know, they, the, they certainly they, do. Yeah, they have that swagger. You look at these guys, you know, they know that they're playing ball. <clears throat> Excuse me. They know that they're playing ball. They know that they can win in any situation, that any guy can be the hero on any night. And then when you have a pitcher like Kershaw that you can rely on to go out there and stop the bleeding after a loss or two, and then you, Darvish, and I don't even need to mention the other guys in the rotation. I mean, they're a great rotation. And, I mean, out of all the teams remaining, the only team that matches up with, with, with each other – pitcher for pitcher is the Yankees and the Dodgers so going into it and I don't know what the future sports book looks like it but I gotta say that they've got to be what Yankees would probably be on the board of plus 300 to win the World Series somewhere in that range they got to be yeah, about Yankees a three are, they got to be about a three to one six, dog yeah six to one right now actually to six win the World Series to one how are yeah, you yeah. laying off of that emotionally how do you lay off of it um just from a betting stamp that, that's got all the right earmarks. You can be emotional about it. It's a good set of odds. I mean, that's a, that's a C note and a happy day. Oh, yeah. There's no doubt that there's been a, a little bit of a scratch hole exchange from the, my, my purse strings over to the old uh, guy at the counter. Not going too crazy. You know, I kind of live in the moment when it's my team's in the playoffs. I learned a brutal lesson. We talked about that a few years back when Jeter broke his ankle. And, uh, you know, I, I, I have so much stress watching the Yankees anyway that when you add on financial burden on top of that, forget it. And especially after reading an article about Bitcoin, uh, you know, forecasting to $25,000 per coin, I almost Good just – you know, I digress. But, I, I, you know, considering, you know, the, 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 the millions of dollars that I would have if I would have just struck when I should have. Should have. <laughs> when, when Bitcoin was no. dollar for dollar and we all didn't ever – yeah. I bought I bought a, a few as a uh, a token, you know, to keep in my wallet, you know, before the, the deep web was hip with everybody else mm. and I was, you know, cruising around on there and stuff. I had, you know, a couple to, you know, just a, a couple few to have and then they went up to the $513 each and I got rid of them and now I want to stab myself in the face. Don't we all? Don't we all? Uh, I'm with you. Let's talk Major League. Uh, no, National Hockey League. We did Major League Baseball. National Hockey League. Let's talk about your... Uh, Las Vegas Golden Knights and their their uh, what's the name of your mascot? Did I even get that correct? You've got some. Oh, he's a, he's a, it, yeah, it's a Gila monster, so I don't right. know if he has like a name or something. I have no idea. Who the hell came I up with that? Well, you know, people don't realize that there's actually a, the Gila monster is a very prominent creature in the southwest deserts you know i've seen many of them on on hikes and climbs so i, I get where they're going with that with the, the gila monster but i think I, I you know you would think the team's called the knights how about have like you know a happy looking dragon or something well why a the gila dragon monster? a knight I get it. anything right, a princess whatever you know oh uh, that was uh i was very impressed with their selection now you guys are red hot you guys are having uh quite the run at home from what i can tell yeah 
let me tell you what, this team is its a very blue-collar team. And this is what I told people before the season. When you build your team from the net out the way that this team has been built, you know, they have an, uh, an abundance of defensemen. So what, what's going on now is as you look around the league, people are getting hurt, and there's going to be GMs calling up George McPhee to get these defensemen, and we're going to get a premium on these guys where people were calling for McPhee to, you know, um, send some of these guys down on waivers, and why is, uh, why is Tuck on waivers, why is the battleship on waivers, blah, blah, blah. And really people have to understand this is all roster moves, and this is all the nuanced things that happen in the boardrooms of these franchises, and it's, you know, in hockey, it's very weird because you have players that are protected and unprotected on waivers. So if you send a guy down and he's unprotected, he can be claimed by a team, and the lower in the rankings, the more chance they have to grab that player. So you have to be very careful who you send down on the waiver wire. Needless to say, things have worked out. There's been some injuries on the club. You know, Hall is out now. He's hurt. Um, Flory got hurt. Our goaltender, our, our, our great goaltender, is hurt with a, a concussion right now. So, you know, that's, that's touch and go to see how he comes back from that. But with uh, with Flurry, you know, there's this kid Malcolm Subban, and you know, we were just talking about the waivers, and that happened with Boston. They had to put Subban on waivers to make room for somebody else, and and when they did that, George McPhee he jumped right away. He put Picard on waivers, who got picked up, and then our, our backup goalie, the Knights' backup goalie, and then struck and got Malcolm Subban, who is a huge, huge prospect. I mean, he hasn't gotten a chance in Boston because they're they're goaltender rich. But if you're familiar with the league, that's P.K. Saban, who's one of the best, you know, uh, defensemen in the league, his brother. And he's, you know, a, a phenomenal talent. And I was just talking to my dad about this, about how uh, I, I see in Malcolm Subban a lot of Henrik Lundqvist, a lot of the same tendencies and characteristics. Now, what will really tell the tale is how he goes about it, his daily routine. Is he going to be mentally tough enough to bounce back after a bad break in a big situation? And he had a couple in the game the other night. I mean, you know, the Golden Knights were up 3-1, then 4-1, and then it was just an automatic uh, comeback. You know, there's a lot of bad goals. And then, you know, Subban, he, he hung firm. And before you know it, the Golden Knights pulled it out and won in overtime. So if he can keep playing like that and the Golden Knights keep getting um, offensive uh, offensive chipping in from guys that you don't expect it from, man, I'll tell you what, this team, can, this team can even challenge for a playoff spot. This is the NHL. Anything's possible in the NHL. Yeah, it's the top four in each division. It's 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 a ridiculous number of teams that make it to the play. It's like any. It's almost like the NBA. I mean, you have yeah, to kind of work at not getting in the playoffs. The thing about the the difference between the NBA and the NHL, though, is it's it's a foregone conclusion: the one seed and the eight seed in the NBA. In the NHL, I can't tell you how many times the number the number eight seed has knocked out the number one seed. There's a lot of parity in the NHL, and and if if the goaltender gets hot for the opposing team, all bets are off. Anything can happen if the, if the netminder gets hot. Unlike basketball, where one guy carries the team throughout the whole season, and you know you might as well just start that game eighty to eighty with two minutes left and let those guys go at it. I have zero desire to watch basketball, zero desire to bet it. Why, when there's such a great sport like hockey on? Well, as we've talked about previously, I wait until the playoffs and then then I start watching uh, basketball. And now, yeah. now there's such a parity that I just wait until Sacramento. And the Cavaliers get into the finals, and then I start watching the game. I mean, to be perfectly honest, that's the way it's going to wind up again. It, you know, it's there's you know it's no fun when one team when one team has three of the best guys, another team has three of the best guys, and one other team's halfway decent, and then everybody else is you battling it out to be the fourth best team. Yeah, it's kind of ridiculous. Uh, I can definitely really see is. that. It really is. Uh, which takes us to. Well, let's talk MMA for a split second. I know nobody's going to care about. Have you been watching Michael Bisbing's uh, insanity this past week? I'm convinced that Mike, you know, no disrespect to Michael Bisbing, but I'm convinced that he might have some head trauma. He's crazy, he right? Needs, like yeah, he he's needs to certifiably been crazy for the last week. He's calling out Dana. He's calling out St. Pierre. And in some very warped reality, um, I'm kind of with GSP. Is, is Bisbing drinking? Uh, either that or is he looking for an out? Because, uh, you know, I think George St. Pierre is going to dismantle him. I think GSP is really going to give Bisping a beating. Bisping has never been impressive to me. I mean, he's okay at everything. He's a master at nothing. How is he going to get up off of his back if GSP sinks that takedown? All right, I, let's, I, no, let's rewind this title a little bit. So for those of you who really don't follow the sport correctly or you've quietly not paid attention to this division, and why should you? It really hasn't mattered in a while. Bisbing stole the belt. Let's be honest. I mean, did he beat Dan Henderson? 
No, absolutely. Not in my opinion. No way. Not in my opinion either. But then again, I'm a diehard Dan Henderson fan, so what do I know? Yeah, yeah. That could be an emotional.